uh, in the papers, in every single paper, uh, about how uh, radiologists in the NHS have been told uh, that they have to check if men are pregnant before conducting scans as part of inclusivity guidance. Oh dear. Fiona, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. It seems mad, this, doesn't it? When you read these kind of stories, you think, they can't be serious. But in fact, I know from talking to James Well, my colleague here who goes to uh, get cancer treatment on a regular basis, that he's asked every single time he goes if he's pregnant. And it's now got to the point where the nurses kind of joke with him and say, look, we know you're not, but we've got to ask you anyway. Well, the key word there is inclusivity. I mean, this is nonsense, isn't it? But it's what's happened because... Yeah. The medical staff have been encouraged to pretend that they don't know what sex anyone is right. and it all comes back to this idea that you know anyone can be a man or a woman and therefore you you can't make any assumptions mm. and, it, and it's frankly insulting to everyone there's a simple solution to this you know we all have a medical record on our medical record it says whether we're male or female right. the problem is that that's been messed with and some people now, if they have a trans identity, they get their their the, the sex marker on their medical record changed. Right. So staff can't rely on it anymore. Yes. So for the sake of a few people who want to pretend they've changed sex, we're all having to answer these silly questions. Yeah. But the answer, if you happen to be a trans man, um, or a trans woman rather, um, I think that's the right way around, uh, is that you can't be pregnant, can you? Because you haven't got a womb. Well, the story indeed. Uh, the, the problem here apparently is... Uh, a woman who wanted to be a man and who uh, when when such a person takes testosterone as part of a, a transition she will appear quite masculine mm. beard um, deeper voice um, and of course if she if she does, has her breasts removed then people may be a little unsure mm. if she's a man or a woman um, but really for the sake of that one person who could indeed be pregnant we're all having to to go through this charade and it's a waste of everybody's time and it really does nothing for your confidence in the in the uh, medical team if they have to go through this sort of this sort of caper you know i'd much rather they were focusing on what's important well exactly also if you are in fact going to the hospital and you are having some kind of radiography scan there's a probability that you might be a bit worried about whatever the medical problem is that you may be encountering yeah i mean they pretend that this is about inclusivity and about being very centered on the patient needs right. well only one or two patients only those who are pretending to be the opposite sex or wanting to be the opposite sex it, it's actually negative for the rest of us and there are stories about people being quite upset mm. by it quite rattled um you know upset about having to talk about their their medical their their history of, right. of fertility problems and so on so it's 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 really not patient centered at all it's actually rather uncaring for the rest of us right and so i mean this is obviously not something that should come as any surprise to us unfortunately though is it because it's happening um, in lots of other areas of the nhs yeah it's become a thing that we now have to pretend that instead of being male or female with all that that entails that we're a collection of body parts um you know we have yeah. to declare our pronouns and declare what organs we think we've got um some nhs trusts are adopting american software that's full of this kind of stuff it's all about pronouns and reproductive organs and and the, the simple idea that you're male or female seems to have been thrown out the window right Yes, and in fact, worse than that, if you only think that, then there's something wrong with you and that you're some kind of bigot and some kind of, you know, transphobe, right? Well, I think the staff are quite worried. Many NHS staff now are worried that someone will tell on them if they don't go through the motions of pretending that they can't tell the person in front of them is either a man or a woman. So mm. there's pressure on all sides. There's a kind of a Stasi effect where, you know, if you don't follow the right procedures and you don't play along with it, then some, you might get into trouble. So yes. that's how we end up in this situation. And of course, if you happen to be um, employed by the NHS and you don't think you really want to take part in it, you could also be into all sorts of uh, problems, right? Yeah, well, in theory, we, you know, we all have legal protections and we're allowed to believe in the reality of two sexes, men and women. Um, but in practice, of course, people do get called out for this. They get into trouble that, you know, they, there have there are always now tribunals going through people taking claims through the courts where they've been fired for wrong think or wrong speak. So it's quite a worry. And if you were working in the NHS, I think you probably just want to keep your head down and keep out of trouble. Right. Imagine so. And presumably with the advent of the new Labour government, it's not going to get any easier and better for sensible people, is it? 
Well, I'm more optimistic than you because the Secretary of State for Health, Wes Streeting, has taken a very firm stand on some other issues relating to transgender uh, patients and health care. So he's really strongly defended the CAS review, which is about children. Mm. Um, so, you know, one thing at a time. But uh, uh, no, I, I think uh, we are seeing a bit of a return to evidence-based medicine, even in this, this area of, of so-called transgender medicine. So uh, let's wait and see. But I think we will see some change. Well, you might want to talk to the BMA about that, because the BMA have come out only last week and recommended to their members uh, that they reject the CAS report uh, and they actually recommend puberty blockers for children, which I found to be an extraordinary thing to say. Yeah, the BMA, people should remember that it's not the voice of medicine in the UK. It's a union, it's a political, it's, a, it's an employment union yeah. for uh, doctors. Um, as far as we can tell, only a small minority of activists have really been involved in that. And the good news is that all the Royal Colleges of Medicine across all the disciplines have come out with the opposite view to the BMA. They've said, we back the CAS review, we support what the Secretary of State for Health is doing. So the BMA is looking rather foolish and isolated uh, in, in de declaring, and it's really just an activist stance yeah. to say, you know, we want children to have the right to demand puberty blockers. Yeah. That's essentially what they're saying. Yeah.